Right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the another our session of Park Office Hours. Uh, just before start, uh, I would like to remind you that Park Code of Conduct applies, and uh, the link will be dropped in the chat in a minute. But the gist of it, just try to be nice to each other. Today, we have a couple of agenda items, uh, as always. Uh, we have some amazing updates. Uh, I guess the first agenda item is about Parka server and mainly FrostDB. Uh, and Alfonso and Matthias are going to give us some updates about those improvements. Be be before we do that, actually, I just remembered we have like a meta thing to celebrate, which is Maxime joining as a member um, of uh, the Parka maintainers. Yeah. Woo! First outside maintainer. Very, I think very cool. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, super cool that to, to have you um, among amongst um, everyone, Maxime. Thank you for welcoming me. Excited to both contributing even more. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for all the contributions like throughout the year. They were really valuable. Um, yeah, great work. And again, Looking forward to more. <laughs> I've, I've been I've been wanting to tweet about this actually. Maxime, are you on Twitter? If you are, no, then I can tag I'm you. I'm not on social media at all. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'll still. Uh, are you still okay with me tweeting about it in general? That a like a non-polar signals employee joined, um, and name you. If, if that, is that okay with you? Yeah, it should be fine. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. That's it. Sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to make sure that we celebrate this. This is the best kind of interruption. So great to have you, Maxim, in here and as a maintainer as well. OK, let's continue from the updates. Yeah, don't need to repeat that, I guess. So I'm just like handing over to Matthias or Alfonso. Who wants to do it? Uh, I think maybe we can, I don't know. Well, you, you go first, Matthias, because this is my first time doing it, so I got an idea a bit of how, like, what the format is. But I was thinking maybe we could go over, like, the changes that we each did to improve performance. Yeah, like, there, there is no strict agenda or, like, format. Um, but I think it kind of, like, started um, maybe um, a shout out again. Let me open this up in FrostDB, um, where uh, I think like three months ago or so, it's been quite some time. Um, we had a contribution by, no, I need to find this, uh, a contribution by doo -doo -doo -doo, this one, this PR. We had a really, really cool contribution by Albert, and he started looking into having um, queries being executed in parallel, and he really, really brought it um, super far. Um, it was super close to to being merged. There were some some ways of like how we constructed the query plan, um, um, where uh, basically what he did was like have the the queries. Um, kind of like during runtime, fan out and then like fan in. What we wanted instead was kind of it was really just like mostly a cosmetic thing. Almost we we wanted to plan out all the go routines up front. We wanted to know like this is how many like workers we will have, and only one once we like ex actually execute the the query plan, um, those those worker threads start to to kick in. Um, but really like he he laid lots of foundations, and we just kind of like built on top of that. Um, and yeah, maybe already like looking looking at um, all of these um, PRs that um, that we can see in here. Uh, we've been quite busy uh, working on top of all of this uh, in the past month or so. Um, maybe to to give some some context. So if we look at um, Parka, so this is Parka running on on the demo .parka.dev cluster. Um, that is publicly av available. Uh, we have um, these these API calls, right? So um, the very first one that is kind of like the uh, it might not even be an obvious one because it just like seems so <laughs> so um, 
so simple, but um, we have, oh, I you can't actually see the dev tools. Uh, let me reshare this as a window. Um, and yes, so in here, um, we can see the profile types. And this is like just for this drop down a request already. And this this should be super, super snappy and super fast. Um, and I think this was like one of the first things. Um, then another one, for example, um, if we um, look at, at labels uh, as a request, this is kind of like um, making a request to get all the label names. So we want Parker to feel snappy and to be to be fast. Um, so we we really set out to improve the um, tail latency. So P95 in our case, and looked at what to what to improve. And yes, we up until then only made use of one core to retrieve data, right? And that's kind of a bottleneck. We can do better. We can like in, in modern machines have many CPUs, um, and that's where we started. Um, Alfonso, do you want to maybe talk through one of the um, PRs that you worked on for um, for the profile types, like how how you improved that one? Yeah, sure. Um, also, another thing I want to add is that um, I guess in, in concurrency, the the other nice change was that we sort of decoupled the decoding of of the parquet data to actually executing a query on that. So that, that was like another interesting parallelization we added. Do you, do you want me to actually put up the PR or just talk through the changes in general? You can talk through the changes. I'm trying to find it on the site right now. Okay. Um, but well, there was. I think uh, this is this one already, right? The first one. Well, maybe, I don't know. So, so I, I think I, was, I wanted to talk more in general about like mm -hmm. um just changing our scan layer to be more stateful so that's where we, like what where your um what like where one pr175 oh. if you go back yes. there it's accumulate results in iterator as well as um a couple of other prs so the the general idea here was basically that we had a very stateless scan layer so we just read data uh, allocate everything it needed and then return to the to the execution layer. And a lot of the changes I did here was to add a bit more statefulness so we could you know reuse a bunch of memory um, and, and information so we'd have to recompute it on each time we wanted to get a piece of data. And this ended up being um, like a pretty nice performance improvement, especially for the uh, for that first query that Matthias showed you, which is just getting the the types of profiles we have. Um, I think in some of our benchmarks, we had like initially taking it 170 milliseconds. And after some of these changes, yeah, went down to like 70 milliseconds. And and currently now, actually, it's at five after all these concurrency changes and everything else, by the way, just as a as a point of comparison. Um, yeah. And I and I think we can we can like actually I already had this like written out pre pre this meeting. Um we are tracking all of this through to pr a Prometheus um, on the demo cluster as well. Um, and as you can clearly see, like the, the tail latency P95 like drastically improved. Um, it's gotten slightly worse because now we actually have data in here again um, over a long time of period. But yeah, I think, I mean, you can see the trend. Like we, we took like two and a half seconds um, sometimes and then that like completely went under one second and now we pushed it down and we're like below 300 milliseconds right now, P95. So I think that's that's super exciting. And yeah, as Alfonso said, like all of this was kind of foundational for this. And another interesting change that's uh, coming up, but well, it's merged in, in FrostDB, but not yet in, in Parka, is that um, there's like a new uh, way to build data to scan levels. So instead of what we used to do was um, store stuff in parquet data, then convert to arrow format to actually execute queries on it. And we do a um, conversion into uh, slices of byte slices to read from parquet and then copy it again to a uh, arrow byte slice, which, which is just a flat 
bytes with offsets uh, for performance reasons. And so we're doing like extra copies at this at this stage. So another improvement is is kind of removing these unnecessary copies and just uh, directly casting data into the correct format to to remove unnecessary copies. Yeah, so that, I that think can improve our memory usage as well. Yeah. I think it's kind of pointless to go through this PR and look at code, but um, yeah, it's there if you want to take a look. Um, and I think given I only selected this one um, profile type, we can actually see it. So for the labels, which is like the dropdown of all the label names, similar trend. Um, and for the values, so that's like for one label name, the values possible to, to be used. So kind of like if you like select app, um, there's another uh, request happening to get these four values. Um, those also like significantly improved um, because of that work. And then I think even more exciting are query and query range. Um, so this is query range is we also could call it like the metrics um, endpoint. And whoa, something happens. Let's let's see. So this. This is like the, the query range endpoint. Um, and this is just so that you like even can start seeing things like metrics. And I think where where this like drastically improved over time was, I mean, next to all of the improvements we, we just talked about, um, was kind of like again, like building on top of what Albert started, um, just using all the cores. Um, and now we can basically like imagine before we looked at one series, walked through through its data, then we looked at the next one. And now what we can do is like, there are many series in this. Uh, we can look at all of these concurrently, maybe like five at a time or like six, depending on how many cores there are, um, or eight if you have eight cores, and then then kind of concurrently build the, the response for, for this request. And that's why, again, we are seeing quite the, the improvement here. Uh, don't be fooled by this time frame. Um, that was <laughs> that was like the last week where we didn't have enough data and some some things broke on on demo, but I think overall, um, so even compared to to before, um, you can see like the tail latency improved quite a bit. I'm not sure what's happening here right now. Probably because a bunch of people are trying out things right now while we're <laughs> we're looking at this, uh, which is good. Um, and then yes, the same. Same is true for um, if we click on on anything. This is like a query request or a single profile query. Um, and again, like what we previously did was kind of like maybe kind of like a, a bit of too drastic, but I think it gets the point across. We were like going through all of these um, spans or like functions in in the profile one by one. Uh, given we only had one core, now we can. Um, read like multiple data blocks from from disk concurrently and then start process, processing them concurrently so we can kind of like work our way through the profiles a lot quicker um to to build the flame graph or like the table um table response and then also um additionally um for merges and i think that's like the biggest improvement so let's take like the last 15 minutes of uh all the things on the Parker namespace. So that includes Parker and the Parker agents and just hit merge. And that will now, um, yeah, like of 15 minutes, take everything, read all of the data and crunch the numbers, like like um, sum up um, the, the cumulative values for all the functions in here. So uh, in the end, um, that now also can use um, not only um, some nice improvements um, from 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 crushing these numbers, but like actually doing it concurrently again. Like I'm I'm kind of repeating myself, um, but yeah, I think I don't know. We don't have we don't have Jaeger traces on on the demo instance, sadly. Um, but that was where it like most clearly showed that now everything kind of like happens concurrently. And before it was like these like steps where everything happened uh, one one time one thing at a time. Um, and yes, I think especially merging profiles will make the biggest difference here. And that was like the one of the goals of all of this next to 
to this dropdown, the query range, so the metrics, and especially this now that we can merge lots of data. Um, I don't know anything to add, Alfonso, um, that we that we want to. No, not not mind. Okay, yeah. I mean, I I don't exactly know. We can like dive deeper into the things, but I'm also happy to just like take take questions. Um, yeah, TLDR is things things are faster, <laughs> uh, and I think that's that's always a good thing. Um, but yeah, any questions? All right, if there are no questions, we can continue with the agenda. Um, again, there are more things to do, more things to, to improve, uh, even in query, query land. Um, so yeah, it will only continue. One, one thing to note, um, since we've got uh, Julian on, on the call, um, I think uh, some of the work that Alfonso did for converting um, Parquet to Arrow, I think, you all were interested in um, Arrow eventually as well, right? Um, so I think this could be an interesting area of collaboration as well, because um, I, I don't know how much you've played around with Arrow yet, but this is definitely a huge bottleneck um, in, in FrostDB right now, or you know, was up until this PR. Yeah, so we, are, we, we have been doing some um, perf comparison between just Parkego and Arrow. The fact that we have been baking so much uh, SIMD optimization in Parkego right now, like there is pros and cons there, right? Uh, in the end, in the end, Arrow is uh, just a way to play with array of byte and put SIMD on top of it. Um, and so we, since we have been baking that also into Parkego, we are still trying to figure out where to use Arrow. Right now, we are mostly interested in Arrow for the to use it um, on the network communication side. Um, like, I don't know if you've seen, there is a, um, a columnar encoding um, work happening on open telemetry, um, which is using Arrow. We are looking at that. Um, something we have been discussing with Ashley, though, is to maybe have um, a, a translation layer of something native into Parkego, you know, like Parkego slash Arrow or something, and you have all the goodness there. Um, so yeah, if we, if you want to, to help us on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah but definitely. my idea when writing this code was that we hopefully eventually, I don't know, use it and merge it upstream. Yeah, could be nice. Yeah, we, we right now on, on Parkego, uh, we, we are thinking about like, how can we add some higher level things on top of the library, like can we come up with common query uh, API mechanism? Can we come with Arrow and all this kind of goodness there? Yeah. I think some I think some of the experience that we've made uh, could definitely be be useful there. I think it's probably more of a conversation to have in the Parquet Go calls, <laughs> but um, I think. Uh, I think, you know, the 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 whatever API we might come up with in Parquet Go um, to to tra transform things to Arrow um, can I think can definitely learn from the things that we've done here. Yeah, totally. Something that we've completely disregarded is like more complex um, schemas, right? Like our schemas currently can only do um, like. Flat, basically flat schemas, except for dynamic columns. Um, so I, th I think th there probably there would probably need to be a little bit more work than what we've done so far. But I think um, it's it's still very interesting to to see what we can you know make common. Yeah, totally. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Any other questions on the topic? 
Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Vashali, you have another agenda item. Mm, this time we're going to uh, listen an update on agent. So we recently been working on some cool EH frame based stack unwinding feature. And how we are and Vashali doing an amazing job on that. And Vashali going to give us some updates on the work. Yeah, I uh yeah, so we have sort of started to merge things slowly in the main. So we sort of wanted to also talk about talk a bit about why we are doing what we are doing and also give an update about where we are at right now and what are like sort of future plans uh for this feature. Um Yes, so like just to give an overview of uh, what why why there is a need to have EH frame based stack unwinding is that if you think about creating a stack trace, uh, like one need to find the return address, look up the name of the function associated with each one, and then print the each function name in the sequence. Uh, so we need to know about like the uh, value of the previous uh, stack pointer so that we can unwind it. Uh, right now, uh, with Parka agent, we are mostly sort of relying on the frame pointers, as you all may know, um, which uh, which creates a bunch of problems. Because uh, while frame pointers like are traditionally more reliable, because it's like a separate register in x86, uh, 64, uh, and it's like RBP, you have that value and then you just use it to unwind it. So it's like very simple method to unwind uh, binaries. But the problem is that most of the time in the infra uh, and in the industry in general, uh, most binaries are not really compiled with frame pointers. Uh, there are like a lot of options. Uh, for example, C++ has uh, one for like striping it out uh, in Java, it's uh, in JVM, it's like default. And then if you want to preserve the frame pointers, you have to use separate option uh, for the same. Um, so because of that, uh, the binaries we see out in the world, a lot of them don't have it, which means that uh, we can't unwind them properly. Uh, so that's why uh, we wanted to move away from relying on frame pointers for unwinding the stack and use something more, uh, uh, something which is like co more commonly used uh, out there. Uh, so there is a dwarf section called EH frame, and it sort of has all the information. It means that we have to walk more uh, registers, we have to get more value, but it sort of has uh, everything encoded uh, in there and whatever we need. So the idea is that we fetch the information via BPF program. Um, over there, we build the unwind tables by ourselves. Uh, we basically pass the value of EH frame section from each of those binaries, uh, and then we use it uh, for the symbolization, etc. cetera. Um, so that's sort of a uh, current idea. We have been sort of working on it for a while now, uh, but uh, so there's like a on, uh, VIP uh, PR in progress, uh, which one can find on Parker Agent. But we have now sort of, and we were mostly working in like last few weeks, we wanted to make sure that we are uh, fixing all the correctness bugs we have uh, with respect to like uh, uh, generating the unwind tables and printing it, et cetera, uh, which we sort of have now done a lot of improvements on. Uh, so we want to sort of, start merging things slowly. Um, so as of now, this week we started to, so one of the things which we are doing is that uh, we are unfortunately moving away from Aya at this point. Uh, so if people remember or, or if people know, uh, we moved from uh, CEBPF program to using uh, Aya, uh, but unfortunately Aya doesn't have BTF and GoRE support at the moment, and we want it uh, for stack and winding feature. So until uh, the community in Aya gets to a point where they have the BTF support and GoRE support, we are going to use the C programs. Uh, and after that, we uh, will plan to hopefully use Aya again. Um, yeah, so this week we merged a PR. I can link. Da -da 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 -da. which basically where we are basically going back 
to uh, using C program, uh, we also merged a PR about uh, unwind, like the basic unwind table generation. And we are working on sort of two PRs. One is uh, to have the EB, like the expanded EBPF program, which we are using uh, for the stack unwinding, which we will soon like merge, uh, hopefully next week or so. Uh, something else which we are working on uh, is like a validation program, which we are going to use to like sort of compare the results from the generated tables and uh, with read elf so that uh, just to make sure that uh, what we are doing is uh, correct and we are reading each value and passing each values correctly. correctly. So uh, yeah, that's like sort of the state of it. And those are like, kind of the things which are going to be in the first iteration of it. Um, and then in the second iteration, we are planning to, uh, we have a bunch of issues open. We are planning to handle scalability on like more wider level. We want to taste more. We want to write more test cases and all of that. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's sort of the state of uh, EH frame based stack unwinding. Any questions? I think um, I, I don't think I 100% understand you know where in in this journey we are right now. So if I'm just repeating in my own words, um, we are able to generate the tables correctly, um, and, and from there, are we able to use these tables already? Have we have we successfully unwinded some some programs? Yeah. Uh, so we are using a bunch of binaries. We were like, first thing was we were using smaller CBP binary. Then we were comparing uh, like Lipsy, uh, also uh, Red Panda binaries, etc. Uh, to like because those are like the big ones. They have like more values uh, and it needs like more parsing. So, uh, but we are still doing this like on one process based thing. Uh, and with the system and uh, system wide profiling thing, I think one thing uh, which we need to work more on is like the scalability issues, uh, also like the optimization, et cetera. Uh, so that's sort of going to be the next step. But for the first step, uh, for the next Parka agent release, what we have planned is that uh, by default, it will uh, we will not be using EH frame first. Uh, we will have a flag where uh, we can use it for the process based things and things like that. Uh, but it will still like help us to uh, sort of coordinate with the system wide profiling, and then we can all like do it more testing, and all of that. Uh, and once that sort of like we have found more bugs, which I am thinking that we will. Um, so after that, I think maybe in the in the next next to next release, we can have it uh, unable to by default, hopefully. Awesome. So uh, if I if I ran Parker Agent from main, it would already be able to do this? Uh, no, because we haven't merged uh, in the okay. main. Uh, so it's like only half things which are merged. We are still like cleaning up things because yeah. the. But you can check out the um, the second EH frame stack unwinding branch. I think that you, uh, using that you can do it. But this is like much neater code which we are merging in the main now. Cool. Very excited about this. Uh, this I don't know if I can call it one feature. <laughs> it's like lots of. Lots of big features making one gigantic feature. That's very, yeah. very important. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for all the in detail, in depth uh, explanation and being patient with me. <laughs> no worries. Awesome. Any other questions, comments? OK, thanks, Marshali, for the update. Uh, we still have time. If you have anything that you would like to ask or discuss, uh, anything on your mind, the board is open.
you can add agenda items or you can just speak about it. You can also make random jokes. You can tell about your day, anything. Nothing? Okay. Nobody wants to talk in the community this week, so it's time to wrap it up. Uh, probably next one. When is the next one? In two weeks. Okay. Never mind. It's not KubeCon. I thought it's going to be uh, conflicting with KubeCon, but it's not. So we will have another one as well. So see you, everybody, in two weeks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you all.